Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to one of the planets of the TRAPPIST-1 system in Space Engine. Today we're actually not going to be using Space Engine or Universe Sandbox, but we're going to take a look at a very interesting browser-based application that NASA has been developing for people to explore and to try to imagine different worlds out there. Let's take a look at this and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So the website is exoplanets.nasa.gov. This is actually a really, really cool website to explore because NASA has been doing a pretty good job at developing and sort of adding features to this over the years. Uh, for example, the one of the apps that I use often is called NASA's Eyes, and it is available as a browser-based uh, sort of an app that you can use inside this um, application right here. Now, what I actually wanted to take a look at is explore the surface. This is a cool app that they've been working on, and I think in the last year or so, it actually has advanced quite a little bit. And um, what it allows us to imagine is basically what it would be like to stand on various relatively famous worlds. Like, for example, Trappist-1E, which you just saw in the beginning of the video. And they also created these really, really cool posters as if they were trying to recruit colonists to go and explore these worlds. Um, there's also Kepler-16b, uh, Kepler-186f, and these will be actually uh, added in the future. Uh, a pulsar planet from J318.5-22 uh, and HD 40307g. This is from a super-Earth. Now, um, some of these already exist here, and you can actually just uh, get to see what the surface looks like by clicking here. This is TRAPPIST-1E. Now, as you explore this surface, which doesn't actually look as good as Space Engine, it actually does have these really cool, I guess, teachables. Basically, there's a bit of education here. Uh, first of all, you can click on things, and those things will actually explain um, our, the science behind certain features and explain what we understand or don't understand about uh, certain things here. So obviously there's some hypothetical water here, there is the neighboring planets, TRAPPIST-1b, TRAPPIST-1c that you would see in the skies, and somewhere over there is TRAPPIST-1d, unfortunately it's not visible right now. Um, this is all kind of in 360, so you can actually explore this if you have a, uh, some sort of a 360 device, um, but it, it is kind of cool. Obviously there is not a lot of features here, not a lot of things to do. And I wish you could actually move around and kind of explore the surface. Hopefully they'll add this in the future. But they've been working pretty hard at adding these. And um, I'm already pretty impressed with what they actually have. So this is TRAPPIST-1E. Um, e. Let's take a look at the other two planets that they've already added. Starting with Kepler-186f. Now, this is one of the most likely places that we could potentially find liquid water on. And so here they actually create a button called Add Atmosphere. You can click on this and look at that. This is absolutely awesome. This, uh, when, when I actually clicked the button the first time, it really impressed me. I don't know why. Uh, obviously, you can do all of these manually in Space Engine as well, but here it's kind of cool to see a planet transform from atmosphere-less to a planet with atmosphere. It does look kind of cool. They also talk a little bit more about uh, the type of clouds you might expect here. Um, and potentially life as well. So they actually added um, grasses here, hypothetical plant life, just to kind of give you an idea what we might be able to find here if there is actually any life. Now, because this is a, um, a red dwarf, everything here is a lot more red than it would be on planet Earth. So everything kind of looks like as if it was Mars, I guess, with most likely uh, blue sunsets, blue sunrises, and a lot of red during uh, actual midday. Uh, there's another planet here, and a lot. this is actually the last one I'm going to take a look at, and this planet is called Kepler-16b, and the poster here says, where your shadow always has a company, and I really, really love how they made these posters. They, they look really kind of retro and very, very appealing, actually. If I was trying to recruit colonists to go here, this is actually, this would do it for me. And anyway, let's go explore the surface. But by the way, you can actually get these posters by do uh, downloading them by pressing this button here um, and use them for whatever reason you want because these are freely available from NASA. 
this is what Kepler 16b surface looks like. And um, the main feature here is, well, there's actually two. One is that this is a hypothetical moon of Kepler 16b, because Kepler 16b is a gas giant that we discovered several years ago. And it's most likely that it has several moons. And if you stand on one of those moons, this is probably what they will look like. Um, and the feature here is the double shadows. Because there are two stars, 16b, a uh, red dwarf, and 16a, which is a K-type star, a little bit smaller than our own sun, uh, you actually get two shadows. One a little bit stronger than the other, but no matter where you go, this is kind of what you'll have. You'll always have two shadows. And, uh, well, okay, not always, but usually. Sometimes these two stars will be um, one behind the other, so in that case, you won't have two shadows. Uh, but this is kind of what, I guess, Tatooine was like for Luke Skywalker back when he was on Tatooine. And uh, this is probably our most Tatooine-like star system we discovered so far, at least um, in the last few years. There are obviously other stars we discovered that are either dual or even triple stars, um, but this one had a planet, and we think that there were moons around this planet as well. So in that sense, it's most likely that... If it comes to an actual Tatooine-like appearance, this is where it's at. And you can once again explore these by clicking on these planets and stars. Um, and also various features around the simulation just to see what kind of science you can learn. Now obviously this is really, really simple, even compared to Space Engine. But still, this is cool that it's available in your browser. And it's really great that NASA is still developing these uh, pretty much full-time. There's a lot of other stuff here. Right here under the menu, you can actually find a lot more stuff, such as Exoplanet Travel Bureau, Strange New Worlds, Historic Timeline, Explorer, Alien Worlds, and so on. And a lot of these are actual simulations. Like, for example, let's go to Strange New Worlds. Let's click on, I guess, Kepler 22b. And this will actually load yet another simulation that is now uh, basically NASA's eyes. This is NASA's eyes on exoplanets where you can take a look at individual planets and they'll all get loaded and processed and you'll get, get to see what the actual planet might look like uh, based on NASA's um, estimations. This just means that you don't really have to download anything uh, because NASA's eyes is an application that you have to download and install but here you can access pretty much everything from your browser. And you have these other buttons here like for example you can compare things to Earth right here you can also compare them to jupiter or you can compare everything to our solar system so there's a lot of really cool features here and just the fact that it's all browser based is quite impressive so um hopefully nasa doesn't stop developing this website because it is super super cool it's very educational and it's actually very appealing as well i do love how they're going for this really cool exploration theme and basically has a lot of um, really interesting tidbits that are not too difficult to understand. So do check it out. It's exoplanets.nasa.gov and the link for it is in the description below. Um, other than that, that's actually all I wanted to say. Uh, play around with this. You might actually explore something and discover something you didn't really know about our universe or our galaxy. And if you do find something really cool, do post it in the comments below just so that other people can find it as well. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed exploring this and hopefully you'll check it out as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.